was kind of strange today how it did that. I think you're right. And he okay, today we're talking about uh, how we compare fractions. I would say it's fairly easy. I'm going to show you how to do the first problem, and then I'm going to let you work with your partners to complete A through D. And then we will uh, talk about those answers, and then we'll do number two. We'll talk about those answers, and then I'll show you how to do number three, where you're adding and you have to do greater than, less than, or equal to. So this, they want you to do estimation. And when you do estimation, what do, where do you usually do estimating? When you estimate. Yeah, it's kind of like a guess. It's kind of like, okay, well this, let me think about this way. And I put the grid on the board because it's kind of helpful. If you draw the visual, because... I'm not really, sometimes I'm like, whoa, another planet, and I can't, you know, I need a visual. So I, if my problem says on problem set 13, 1A, says I have one half, and then it says I have two sevenths. So I'm going to have seven boxes, one, two, three five, six, seven, and how many am I going to color in? Look at your problem set, one, A. So you're going to color in two of them because it's two sevenths. Well, what do we already know about a half? If we have a half plus a half, what would it give us? One whole. The halfway mark to this set of seven will be about right there, wouldn't it? Is it near the halfway mark? Is it? But is it at the halfway mark? No. It's less than the halfway, right? So if it doesn't quite get to one half, would we be close to, would we be greater than one or less than one whole? Less than. But what if we had something like this? Check this out. What if we had something like this? We had three colored in. And then we had something like this. This is five eighths. And this is three six. And of course, my marker's not going to work right. Is this one half? Mm -hmm. Is what's half of eight? Because I have eight boxes. What's half of eight? Four. Is five bigger than eight or four? Hmm. Yes. So I have at least a half and at least a half. Is that going to be greater than or equal to one, or is it going to be less than one? If I have a half plus more than a half, is that going to be greater than one or less than one? It's going to be greater because you have to think in your head, okay, one half plus one half equals one whole, right? And in this case, I have more than a half plus a half, so that would be greater. You see where I'm going? You get it? I mean, it's not too hard. One way that I think of it is if I look at number letter A, say I have a half. Look at the denominator. If I had two boxes, what would half of those boxes be? How many would be in... Half of that part. One. So I have to have at least one on top, right? And look at the seven. What would be half of seven? 
3.5. So you have to have at least 3.5 or greater on A. Is 2 sevenths at least 3.5 or greater? No. So does it qualify for one hole or is it going to be less than one hole? Less than. So you need to get out your manipulatives, your charts that have the boxes. If I were you and I would draw them out, talk about them with your neighbor, I'll come around and look at your work to see what you're doing. Um, on D, on D you're going to have to say something about subtraction, doesn't it? I wonder how that's going to work. Hmm. So work with your neighbors, see what you come up with, and then I'm going to give you about 10 minutes to work through these, and then once the timer goes off, we'll talk about them. Yes, ma'am. So can you do, do over to 1A, so it's 1 half plus 2 sevenths, and then you just draw the boxes, and then you mark the halfway point. Mm -hmm. and, then you and then you ask yourself, if I combine these, Sets. Is it going to equal one hole or more, or is it going to be less than one hole? Your goal is if both of your sets equal at least one half, then it's going to be greater than a hole. Definitely. Okay? If they equal at least one half, if both of your sets, both of your fractions equal at least one half, you know it's going to be a hole. Right? But if one of them doesn't equal a half, it's not going to be a hole. Do you understand it or not? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I'm going to come around too. So work with your neighbors. I have one. Why don't you go up to those two? I'll set the timer for two. Okay. No repeat. One of the problems we had was one and one fourth is a C, one and one fourth minus one third. Well, remember we're gonna just cover the whole number and not pay any attention to the whole number. Is one fourth at least half? Is it at least halfway there? What's half of four? Two. One is less than that, right? So we automatically know it's going to be less than. And one third, is that at least half? Is it? What is half of three? Cause remember, we do decimals now. Or one point. One point five is my numerator at least 1.5 or 1 and 5 tenths no, is less than so now here's the problem though we have that one so does that automatically mean it's going to be at least one why why do you think what do you think Okay, you're going to what? I missed it, sorry. Yeah, you might actually have to borrow, huh? Because what if my second fraction is going to be too big? So some of you were having a hard time when I was coming around telling me if which was bigger, one-third or one-fourth. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I have notebook paper. I'm going to tear it into four parts, like my first one. And I should try to keep them even, or else my little demonstration won't work at all. But if I divide into four parts, maybe. Let's do it this way. I teach fifth grade. They didn't teach me how to fold paper. Like the primary grades, you know? So this is one-fourth. That's what one-fourth looks like. Same size paper, right? And one-third
looks like this. So if I were to put them together, what is, which one's bigger, a third or a fourth? The third. The third. Think about it this way. Think about like paper. The bigger the denominator gets, what happens to the number? It gets smaller and smaller. If I folded this again, I would have eight parts. It would be even smaller, wouldn't it? One third is bigger than one fourth. So now we know this is bigger than this. I have a problem. Can I subtract one third from a fourth without borrowing? No. no. So what would my answer be? Greater than one or less than one? It'd be less than because I would have to borrow from the one. And like I was telling people, when in doubt, just solve it. Because I don't know if I've ever been anywhere in real life where I had to try to figure out an estimation for a fraction like that. I don't know. Beats me. So I say, when in doubt, solve it, and then pick the one closest, you know? And I put that uh, on the web. Okay, good. Then we had 3 and 5 eighths, which most of you seem to get. Is 5 eighths at least? This one, though, I mean, yeah, this one. Is 5 eighths at least half? What's half of 8? Half of 8. Four. Is this at least four? Half of nine would be yep, four and a half or four point five. Is this at least four point five? These are both at least half. Am I going to have to? Borrow doesn't matter because I know I have at least one. Even if I borrowed, I would still have at least one. The next step wants you to get it to the closest half. So if we look at a number and we say, okay, what's half of this number? What, what do you think I would do at this point? What do you think? Greater than a half, less than a half? How would I know if I'm getting close to half? Let's say I have, here's my half. Well, that is a good half, isn't it? Man, there's at least half. Is there another way I could divide that evenly into smaller parts? So do you think one-fourth plus one-fourth, so if I did one-fourth, at least one-fourth plus one-fourth, would I have at least a half? So this time what you're going to ask yourself, okay, is what's half of this? And let's do another half. So if I have one-fourth, what's? Half of four. Okay, and could I divide that down again? Could I? One. One. Okay, so what you're going to do this time is you're going to take it and you're going to divide it once in half, and then you're going to divide it again. And I told you how to do that, and now we're not going to do it. Okay? Look at lesson number three. On number two, we'll do the half another day because we're going to do it like we did our lesson 11 and 12. Remember? Baby steps, 
I want you to master getting closest to the hole first before we start going smaller. They give you too much at once. This part, though, I think is going to be easy for you. Five and two-thirds plus three and three-fourths, just like what you've been doing. Work with your neighbor. I want you to solve this problem. Right there. Solve that problem. Five and two-thirds plus three and three-fourths. Today. What kind of strategy could I use on that without having to just kind of solve everything to find an exact answer, but uh, to know beyond a shadow of a doubt if that answer is greater than, less than, or equal to the sum of that problem, is it greater than, less than, or equal to eight and two thirds? What kind of strategy can you use? So you're going to, you say your strategy would be to look at the whole numbers and, then and add them. So we know just by looking at this and using mental math that this problem would be greater than eight and two thirds because we know that that's eight and we know that that's two thirds and we have an extra three fourths. I always find it interesting when I walk around to see different strategies people are using. Is it okay to write it out and to solve it? You bet you. In fact, I encourage you to write it out because the more you write it out, guess what you're doing? Definitely getting it right, but also you're doing what? Who said that? Practicing. Because how many days have we spent on adding fractions and finding common denominators? Not many, right? So it's good. I really like when I walk around, I see you guys finding common denominators, and you're adding them, and you're making sure. Because that extra practice, even though they're not saying, can I have an exact answer, and you can tell just by looking at it if it's greater than, less than. This gives you an opportunity to practice adding fractions, too, or subtracting fractions. Any questions about how that works? Yes, ma'am. Finding a common denominator first? Yes, definitely, definitely. Okay, your assignment, so on number three, I'm okay with that, whichever process you choose if you want to do it mental because it's supposed to be based all based on estimation. My preference would be for you to do the whole sheet by finding a common denominator and adding just so you have the practice because it's not going to be long and we're going to be done with module three and then you might not get any, another chance to practice your fractions before your state assessment. So it's just based on how much effort you want to put into it. I'm not going to have you do the half yet because if you are choosing to estimate, I want to do the half another day. I want you to master at least getting to a whole first before we jump into, okay, now let's break it down further. So your homework One A through D and three I through L. And what I'll do is we'll do this just like we did lesson on homework page. So what you'll do is you'll turn this in for a grade. And remember, I'll give it back to you then again before our next math lesson, and then we'll talk about half. Okay?